and this is another amazing example. I should have put like some basal cell carcinomas in here so we could get through the cases in time, but case number nine. 30 year old female with a 2.5 centimeter medial thigh nodule. On MRI, it was directly adjacent to the femoral artery and vein. So the differential was between a nerve sheath tumor or maybe a vascular malformation on imaging. But intraoperatively, the surgeons realized, nah, this is not next to the uh, femoral artery and vein. This is actually inside the lumen of the femoral vein. And that's what we're seeing right here. Here's the thick muscle layer around the outside of the vein. And we can see that the, uh, the intima of the vein is pretty thickened here and reactive. There's kind of fibrosis and myxoid or mucinous change, which is what we see in kind of intimal fibrosis in vessels. Um, and then the lumen is, itself is actually mostly plugged by a nodule of something. So at first glance, you could wonder, is this like an organized thrombus that's occluding the vessel lumen? I mean, there's blood, there's pink stuff that looks kind of, you know, fibrinoid at first. But going closer, that's not all there is. It's actually not quite like bright red, like fibrin, but in fact, it's more like kind of sclerotic to, to myxoid or even almost chondroid in appearance. So the word I would use for this background is a chondromyxoid or maybe chondromyxoid slash sclerotic collagen background. And embedded within that, we see epithelioid cells arranged as single units, small nests, or even little cords and chains in here. I think you may know where this is going if you've ever seen this tumor before. This is a rare bird, but this is a gold standard, classic example of how this tumor occurs and presents. And it's one of multiple examples I've seen that look just like this. But these cells, I mean, they look epithelioid. You could think that they could be metastatic carcinoma, you know, like metastatic breast cancer inside of the lumen of a vessel. That would be pretty strange to have that presentation, I would say. Um, you could think of, of an epithelial tumor here, but that's not what's going on. And if we look around and see that this, this tumor, because it is a tumor, and I will show you what it is in a minute, is actually uh, starting inside the vessel, filling the vein, and then perforating through the wall of the vein and invading the adjacent soft tissue. More of that chondromyxoid background here. There are reactive background uh, vessels, but most of the tumor is actually epithelioid cells not making vessels, but you can see that some of these epithelioid tumor cells are actually making little vacuoles in their cytoplasm, kind of like the vacuoles we saw in the last case. There is abundant hemorrhage. Let's look closer at the vacuoles here. If we get lucky, you'll see that in some of those, we have little fragments of degenerative material, and occasionally you'll find inside those vacuoles erythrocytes. See here, we're getting degenerative fragments of erythrocyte inside the vacuole in these epithelioid cells. Here's another one. So these are the classic blister cells, which sometimes contain fragments of erythrocyte. And this, I think you've probably figured out, is a epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, all right? These are tumors, vascular tumors with intermediate um, uh, malignant potential. And I want to, to mention right now, in case you're not familiar, there are, are several different types of hemangioendothelioma, all of which are totally separate, unrelated tumors. These are not just different morphologic variants of hemangioendothelioma. Hemangioendothelioma is not one thing with different patterns. It is multiple different things that get put into this intermediate category of, of not fully malignant like an angiosarcoma, but definitely not totally benign like a hemangioma. Some of them belong closer to the angiosarcoma side of the spectrum, and this is the one that does. Epithelial hemangioendothelioma has the potential to metastasize and kill patients. It just doesn't do it as often or as rapidly as angiosarcoma usually does. And it molecularly is different from angiosarcoma, so it's definitely not an not a angiosarcoma either. It is its own kind of entity. With these tumors were first, I think, de described in the lungs and also in the liver, where they present as multiple nodules at presentation. And in those settings, a subset of the patients will eventually die from their disease, a significant subset, oftentimes many years after their diagnosis. 
Um, so again, much slower and uh, less rapidly progressive than angiosarcoma. And early on, people thought these were actually carcinoma because they were epithelioid cells and they don't usually make well-formed vascular channels. What they do is they make these little blisters, these little bubbles, which is the cell's attempt to make an intracytoplasmic lumen. So it's kind of a immature vascular channel formation that never develops into full full, um, well-developed vessels that interconnect with one another, okay? So instead, what you get are these little lumens with red cells or red cell fragments in them, and that's what you're going to usually see in epithelial hemangioendothelioma. There is a, a rare subset that is an alternative fusion that can make vessels, but usually do not expect to see well-formed vessels. Expect to see single epithelioid cells or nests or cords or chains set in a sclerotic or chondromyxoid background. And these are going to stain with endothelial markers, and they often stain with keratin also, so be aware of that. The classic uh, time when they occur outside of the lungs or the liver, when they occur in soft tissue, sometimes they will arise in the lumen of a vein, and then they will expand and invade out of that vein into the adjacent soft tissue. Um, and they can sometimes be centered in the subcutis or the dermis as well without involvement of a vessel. Here's another look where you can't really see the vessel wall because this is kind of popped out of the vessel lumen here. But I just wanted to give you another look because it has uh, some really prominent cords and chains here, if I recall. My computer's having trouble handling recording and loading all these, uh, these uh, web pages at the same time here. There we go. That's the cords and chains pattern. And epithelial hemangioendothelium is one of multiple different tumors that can have cords and chains of cells. Myoepitheliomas can do this, chordomas, and a variety of others. So just keep this tumor in mind. And to show you, I think I do have the stains. Keratin was positive here. But to save time, I won't show you. I'll just show you uh, what was this one. I think this was ERG, yep. Strong, diffuse expression of ERG. So uh, when these arise as a primary tumor in the skin or soft tissue in the periphery, I usually uh, recommend uh, to the surgeons that they, or the treating physician, that they do um, a workup to rule out an internal primary because lung or liver primary um, epithelial hemangioendotheliomas can sometimes metastasize to distant sites, including the skin or soft tissue. But here, this, I, I believe after workup, this was a primary arising in the vessel, in the, the femoral vein. And um, when they arise in the soft tissue, about 10% of those can eventually give rise to distant metastases, often in the lungs. So those patients do need follow-up, probably long-term follow-up, um, and they do need to have the tumor completely excised, ideally, um, if with negative margins, all right? And the, um, uh, in this case, I did not do molecular because this was classic morphologically. But in difficult cases, you can confirm the diagnosis with molecular testing. Um, the most common um, uh, fusion is between WWTR1 and CAMTA1. Um, and that was discovered um, several years back by a group of really great researchers. And so that's the most common um, a finding in the conventional type of epithelial hemangioendothelioma. And then the subtype, um, the, a small uh, minority of cases, have a YAP1 TFE3 fusions. And that's the variant that tends to produce actual vascular channels. But look here, no vascular channels. There may be vessels in the background, but the tumor cells are making cords, chains, nests, islands with just vacuoles, not with well-formed vessels. So it's an important thing to know about. And remember that it's keratin positive often, um, uh, just like epithelial angiosarcoma can be. So you don't want to see epithelial cells, do a keratin, and then think you're dealing with a carcinoma. Always keep epithelial vascular tumors in your differential diagnosis when you're thinking of a weird carcinoma. Always think, could it be a vascular tumor? That's my advice. All right. A great example of, of epithelial hemangioendothelioma.